Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. It has been two decades since the fall of the Iron Curtain, but the study of the Russian language is still in its infancy in our public schools. In fact, the Russian program at Enlow High School in Raleigh is the only one in all of North Carolina's public schools. Producer Donna Campbell and narrator Bobby Dobbs bring us the story as part of our series about critical foreign languages, learning with the world. Dr. Rom. Students at Enlow High School are engaged in learning Russian. Yeah. Russian is one of four languages identified by the Department of Public Instruction as critical languages. The others are Chinese, Japanese, and Arabic. These are languages whose importance in the world of security, diplomacy, finance, business, far exceeds the, the people who are able to marry the language with content expertise in business, finance, security, intelligence. It's, it's important to get Americans um, understanding um, these critical language areas because of the changing dynamic of the world. Inlo is the only public school in the state that offers classroom instruction in Russian, although there is a growing interest in the online courses offered through the North Carolina Virtual Public School. Russian instruction is only available part-time at Inlo. But thanks to the dedication of a very enthusiastic teacher, the program is growing every year. We're lucky to have Mr. Ozil on board here. He makes Russian a pretty uh, lively and interesting and dynamic uh, language to learn. I'm Richard Ozil from Burgall, North Carolina, and anybody who sees me uh, and hears me speaking English uh, would not believe that я могу сейчас начинать говорить по-русски. Это просто непонятно. And th they wouldn't expect something like that to come out of somebody who talks the way I do. Richard Uzzle grew up in Burgaw, North Carolina, during the height of the Cold War. Burgaw is a very small town in Pender County. It has the distinction of being the home of the only Russian Orthodox Church between Miami and New York City. The church, with its distinct onion dome, was established in the 1920s by Russian immigrants who were part of the Hugh McRae farming movement in eastern North Carolina. The architecture had an influence on young Richard, who became fascinated with all things Russian. And Brezhnev and Nixon's dialogues were a part of my life, and you know, 15,200 nuclear weapons pointed at us from Russia was just a, something very, very... Uh, even as an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old that I understood well when I would see things which I thought were American propaganda like Boris and Natasha, let us two find moose and squirrel. It made me feel bad because I knew that despite the fact there are many political truths and uh, horrors regarding the gulag and autocratic society, I knew that there had to be something more. Boris and Natasha might be the most recognizable Russians for past generations. But today's students are drawn to the language and culture for other reasons. It opens not just another way to communicate with other people, but it opens another door in your mind. It, it changes the way you think when you think in a different language. Lily is one of Mr. Uzzle's most accomplished students. She spent the summer before her senior year traveling in Russia. All of us Americans were treated with like surface respect, but there was always this little element, even with our host families, of you're an idiot. Like a lot of us met the sentiment, like the stereotype that Americans don't know anything about other cultures and don't care. And this spring, she has been awarded a scholarship to study in Kazan, Russia, for the entire next academic year. The scholarship is just one of many federal grants now available for the study of critical languages. I think there's just uh, enigmatic aspect about Russia. It's, uh, it, it is a big mystery. It's this um, menacing aspect of Russia that has survived the Cold War and uh, whether they've been exposed to Russia as an enemy or not, it, I think it is uh, fossilized enough into the uh, psyches of their parents that there is a little bit of a recoil, I think, when, whenever there's, it, it's a little jarring. You studied Russian and they see these you know, bizarre looking letters in the alphabet. Uh, 
Uh, uh, they luckily uh, learned to uh, get past these stereotypes and see beautiful things. What they do also come to realize is that um, whether it's I mean, just so many small villages in Russia have these uh, beautiful cathedrals with onion domes uh, built with the last farthings of the peasants who uh, helped build these things. Just they, They're just little mushrooms on countryside, uh, the equivalent of Burgall, North Carolina. The kids leave their classrooms um, uh, often laughing and smiling and really enjoying learning about the culture and learning, learning about uh, the history and the foods and the dancing and everything else through, through that world language. I know there, there are people who will say, you know, proudly that, you know, I haven't left this county in my whole life, and I'm proud of it, but guess what? Uh, that's pretty sad. Uh, it's about the most patriotic thing that we can do is to uh, go out and, uh, you know, expand our markets over in these countries. I mean, not to mention the fact that life is just so much more interesting. I mean, your life just becomes better. You get better. You feel better. And I think it's important for kids in America, and especially like in North Carolina, to really immerse themselves in other cultures and try to start understanding how they might fit into this world. The Learning with the World series is produced by UNCTV in association with Learn NC and the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. For more information about Russian or other critical languages, visit learnnc.org and stay tuned for our upcoming special, Learning with the World. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.